Hello, I'm Sue Kaiser. Welcome to my house. This is 7026 on Yangsan Compound. My family and I lived here from September of 1967 through June of 1970. My father, Wendy, and mother, Jane, um, I'm Sue. My next youngest brother is Jim, and my youngest brother is Rich. Welcome to our house. Being there in, in 67, Seoul was still recuperating from the war. Lots of build, there were still some bombed out buildings that were being scraped away. When we were in Korea, 67 to 70 was the Pueblo and the Blue House raid. So it was unsettled times in South Korea. The Pueblo was mm -hmm. when the North Koreans um, captured um, a U.S. Navy ship called the Pueblo held the crew captive. Um, and then the Blue House raid, um, Hawk was president and infiltrators came down and um, were trying to assassinate him. I think they both were in 68. I'm not positive, but they were mm -hmm. fairly close together. There was some pretty active infiltrating happening across the DMZ then. Um, trip over was very eventful. Um, I had left um, my middle school as a ninth grader on the day of the first football game that the team dedicated to me. <laughs> my rich, my youngest brother had been playing out in the Mesa. Albuquerque is very, Albuquerque, New Mexico is very brown and dry. And he'd been playing out in the Mesa and got bitten by a ground squirrel and they carry rabies. And there wasn't time, and there was no way to find the one that bit him. So while I'm at this football game having a great time, my parents are at the emergency room in the hot base hospital, having my brother begin the series for rabies shots. We have to carry the serum with us on the plane and keep it cold. So we flew from Albuquerque to Seattle, Tacoma, and then just had to commercial and had to stay in a um, military terminal for hours waiting for the plane to Seoul. Um, I was so exhausted that I curled up in a crib that there were no beds, but they had some cribs and I was so tired. I crawled into the crib and slept a little bit. It was a very sad time for me leaving all of my friends. And um, it was a really difficult, difficult time for my parents with Rich's rabies stuff. So by the time we got to Seoul and we um, landed in Kimpo and were picked up by someone from my father's unit and driven onto base, I think that um, between sheer exhaustion and such a foreign landscape coming from a desert that it was overwhelming. And then we walk into this house that looks like it's a waiting room for some military office and just really, really wondered what we had done. Usually when military families move, you get a weight limit. You can, if you exceed your household goods, exceed this, poundage, then you're going to pay a surcharge. Otherwise, the move was free. Going to Seoul, it was a very low weight limit. So all of our furniture was um, army issues. This was in 67 to 70. So it was very basic military furniture. Only furniture that I remember is taking over there was my piano. I think maybe we were allowed one vehicle. But anyway, it was sparse compared to what a home in the States would have been. It, and it wasn't a fancy, TVs used to be like in big fancy consoles and it wasn't, it just kind of sat on a small table. <laughs> it was very short, maybe 10, maybe a foot tall, almost like a milking stool, just really short.
my youngest brother um, liked to sit on that small little brass stool to watch TV in the afternoon. Even in the late 60s, this was a black and white TV. We could get Korean stations, but I didn't speak any Korean. So it wasn't a big help watching Korean TV. And so it was Armed Forces Network. Um, the broadcast didn't come on until four and went off at either 10 or 11. So six hours of American TV. And there was this ridiculous little sound when they were changing into to the news. And it sounded like a very old car horn and it would just go, Auga, auga. And that's how it got your attention that something was changing. It was so not modern. So we only had six hours a day of regular TV and all of it was old stuff. We had no idea what current US TV shows were. So when we would go back to the States and, you know, um, talking with friends and they'd reference a TV show and had no idea what they were talking about. Way so it was different, but yeah, all of the the metal on all the furniture was gray. The um, vinyl on the seats was gray. It was it was sterile. <laughs> My mother, like many military wives, had a real knack for turning sterile environments into very homey, cozy um, atmospheres. Each place that we lived, she embraced the culture of where we were living. And she did a really lovely job of the things that she purchased early on in Seoul, making our house feel very much with a Korean flair. And yet it was still homey to us. The longer that we were in Seoul, the more Korean furniture that we accumulated, <laughs> um, which I now have most of, thankfully. They're some of my best treasures. Um, I think all the homes came outfitted, and if they didn't, the families immediately bought a brass fanned fireplace screen. So it folded up into like a single leaf or it opened up into a fan, and that was the focal point of the, this room that the fireplace is on. One of my um, favorite memories from this fireplace wall is the picture that my boyfriend and I had taken when we were um, ready to go to the junior senior prom. Um, we look like we're getting married, which we didn't for a very long time, but we reconnected in 2014 and um, then shortly thereafter married and now our high school romance has come full fruition. Thank you so much for spending the time to visit our home here in Seoul, South Korea. For those of us who were lucky enough to have lived here on Yongsan Garrison in Seoul, South Korea, the memories of our time here will forever be held in our hearts. You know, a lot of American families uh, military families um, lived in different countries overseas, but there was just something magical about living here in Seoul for us. It was our Camelot, a place that was perfect but no longer exists.